look, I know I've been saying this often in these Jeff Speakman reviews about how he was never properly, especially after Deadly Outbreak, how he was never properly utilized by Hollywood. And I'm going to keep saying it, especially in this video and the next video. And even some of the later ones when we get to the gunman and the uh, striking range is the other one. But... I mean, I mean it when I say it. Hollywood definitely dropped the ball on Speakman and gave him, you know, shit movies to work with, like this one and the next one. God, this movie sucks. But today I'm going to talk about Scorpio 1, which is the. This one and the next one are both from the same company, Royal Oaks Entertainment, which they actually did some decent movies. I mean, they did this one, right? Yeah, they did this one, Crash Dive with Michael Dudikoff. I like this one. Um, yeah, this wasn't a bad movie. They did some other Michael Dudikoff movies that I like. But I did not like this one. But again, this one and the next one are both from Royal Oaks Entertainment and they're both directed by the same person, Worth Keeter. And you know what? Both of these movies suck. Now I know a number of years ago when Rambo Raff talked about these movies, Worth Keeter like, commented and threw a big fit because Matt didn't like the movies. If the same thing happens... To me, if the same thing happens because of these videos, I'm just saying in advance, dude, get over it. Like, you made a couple of shitty movies. It happens. I don't know if it's the director's fault or the script's fault or the production company. It's a shitty movie. This one and the next one are both shitty movies. Just get over it, okay? That's in advance. And I like some of Worth Keeter's work because he worked on Power Rangers. I like his Power Rangers stuff. But I don't know whether, you know, these movies just had shitty scripts or no money or, you know, the producers didn't give a fuck or whatever, but it shows in this movie. And the biggest, I will say, the biggest thing that's confusing about this movie is the marketing. Because on the poster, Jeff Speakman is on the poster, but Robert Carradine's name is first. In the movie, in the credits of the movie... Robert Carradine's name is first, but Jeff Speakman is second. But he's still on. But Jeff Speakman's still on the poster. In most places where this movie was released, Jeff Speakman is on the poster, but Robert Carradine's name is first. And Robert Carradine has less to do in this movie than Jeff Speakman does. But why is his name first? That is, I didn't understand that. Because I had seen this movie a couple months ago. I had watched this movie because I had not seen it in so long. Um, the first time I saw this movie was a number of years ago. I had rented it from when Blockbuster did the online stuff. Which was the same thing as Netflix. Except Blockbuster, in my opinion, had more advantages to it. And then they fucked that up. But anyway, that's a different video for a different day. I had rented it from Blockbuster. I think I watched the first 30 minutes and I turned it off and sent it back because it was that shitty of a movie. And I watched it. I popped it. It was on Tubi. Shameless plug, I know. But I put it on Tubi and I watched it. And yeah, same thing. I got through again like the first 30 minutes of the movie and shut it off. I'm like, this movie still sucks. And then I would watch it yesterday just to kind of refresh for this review and see if maybe I could finish the movie, but I couldn't. I could not finish the movie, and I could not finish the next movie, Memorial Day, either. Because they're that fucking bad. It's true. I don't care if people are going to hate, comment, and all this, and tell me I'm wrong. They're shitty movies. And poor Jeff Speakman. Again, the previous movie that I reviewed, this one, Land of the Free... It's actually a good movie. It's actually They actually knew what the fuck to do with Jeff Speakman. Holy shit, what a concept, right? 
And then the next, these next two movies, it's back to square one with Jeff, which is stupid in my opinion. Fucking stupid. Just like these two movies. So anyway, like I just said, the biggest problem with this movie is the marketing. Jeff, if you look up any VHS, DVD cover, whatever, poster, usually Jeff Speakman is on there. There's a couple where Robert Carradine is on there, but most of them is just Jeff Speakman. But when you watch the movie, his name is second. I don't understand it. And Carradine has less to do than Speakman in this movie. Speakman... There's a couple of decent little moments where he's fighting. The beginning, like the intro to his character was fine. Where he's on a mission and the you know his partner gets killed. Like that was okay. And then from there the move, you know, that was like the one moment of the movie. And then the little fight scenes that he has, they're not anything special, but there's some little Kempo scenes. And that's it. The rest of the movie. You're not missing anything. You're really not. They're trying to do this space bullshit, which was really popular at the time in the late 90s. They were doing more movies like this, like Armageddon, and it wasn't just action movies, but they were, you know, for a little bit there, there were all these movies that went to space. Armageddon, Red Planet, Mission to Mars. There was a bunch of these kind of movies. It was something in the late 90s, early, two, like 2000, 2001, where space was cool again. Everybody, I don't know if it's because Star Wars was coming out, Episode 1 was coming out, and everybody wanted to do a fucking space movie. I don't know, but, you know, this one fucking blows dogs for quarters. This movie's god-awful. It's a horrible movie. And they were trying to do the space thing. The movie opens up, this guy sabotages the space station, and then he can't get his suit on, so he's floating out in space. And the effects look like shit. They really do. So there you go. And then the CIA gets involved, like all these, like all these movies. <laughs> See, it's not just Steven Seagal movies where the CIA is always involved. It's all these kind of movies. So the CIA gets involved, and they send Jeff Speakman. Jeff Speakman's their their best agent. But what doesn't make sense is Jeff Speakman was a Marine in the film, and he's wearing a Marine uniform, but yet he works for the CIA. I don't understand how that works. But the little bit of action where he's on this mission in Iraq, that was okay. I like that part of the movie. Why the rest of the movie couldn't have been as good as that is beyond me. So he goes up into space. For some reason, Army Rangers go with him. I don't know why. That doesn't make sense either. And then you have these team of scientists and Robert Carradine is the computer guy. So they go up there and then it starts to turn into a fucking pretzel. The plot gets convoluted. There's, you know, the CIA is trying to protect their investment. Everyone else is trying to protect their investment. The Army Rangers betray everybody. They want the space station for whatever reason. And then they have to stop them. And then Speakman looks fucking bored for the rest of the movie He's not really given much to do. You know, there's a little... I mean, you can find the clip. You can, If you look up any Jeff Speakman uh, tribute video or, or fight scene video, the one little fight scene is always in the video where he fights the guy. And that's it. And then Robert Carradine doesn't do much either. He just kind of... And I like Robert Carradine. He was the dad on Lizzie McGuire. You know, I'm a fan. He was in The Cowboys with John Wayne. I'm a fan of his work. But he just sits there. Yeah, we got to do this. Yeah, that's gonna. This is gonna blow up if we don't do this. We got to do this. And then Speakman's just running around the space station for the rest of the movie, and then it keeps cutting back between all the the political shit of, of the film. And the next movie, Memorial Day, is more of the fucking same. But Speakman has less to do in that movie than this movie. Like, what happened? Like, again, was it just a bad script to begin with? Did they not know what to do with Jeff Speakman in these two movies? Did the producers just not give a fuck? Did they spend the money on cocaine and hookers and not the movie? Or was it a combination of everything? <laughs> Inquiring minds would like to know.
But this movie blows. It really does. I'm surprised that I was able to sit through the the three times that I have watched it. I'm surprised I sat through all of that. But these movies suck. This one and the next one. I'm gonna keep reiter. I'm gonna keep hammering that nail. I'm gonna keep bringing that up because again, it's bullshit. I just don't understand how you know. Besides the first four movies that he did, and then Land of the Free and Running Red, how did these idiots fuck up? Like how? Again, it's not like Jeff Speakman was just some flash in the pan guy. Perfect Weapon was very successful. People remember, even now, to this day, people remember the Perfect Weapon. He had talent. He had charisma. Obviously, he could pull off the martial arts, and they still fucked it up by giving him shitty movies like this. Again, it's no wonder that he stopped making movies. It's no wonder why he, after basically running red, he said, fuck it. Because Running Red is the last movie where he was the star. Everything that came out after that, he's a supporting character. But yeah. But I just, you know, the the the, the more of these movies that I'm looking into and, and reviewing and talking about, the more angry that I get because, you know, they fucked up a cup of coffee. All of, Everything was there. All the ingredients were there. And they still fucked it up. They fucked up a cup of coffee. I don't know how you fuck a cup of coffee up, but these idiots in Hollywood did it with Jeff Speakman. You know, it's just, it's so baffling to me that, you know, so many other, you know, stars lasted as long as they did. But Jeff Speakman got one big theatrical movie, and that was it. Fucking Pauly Shore got more theatrical movies than Jeff Speakman. And that pisses me off because Paulie Shore only made three good movies. Encino Man, Son-in-Law, and In the Army Now. All the other movies that he was in sucked. Jury Duty sucked. Biodome definitely sucked. But Paulie Shore got more attention than Jeff Speakman did back in the day. That I will never understand. The Kardashians have had attention for 15 fucking years but Jeff Speakman only got one big theatrical movie. I hate it. I fucking hate how this shit is. But anyway, this movie fucking blows. I think it's on DVD. I think it's in a double feature with a Dean Cain movie, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's called Fire Trap, which I've seen part of that before and I remember that being okay. But I am a, I'm a sucker for Dean Cain and his work. I like Dean Cain quite a bit. Mainly because of uh, Lois and Clark. I used to watch that a lot as a kid. I think it's in a double feature with that, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, Scorpio 1's on fucking DVD, but not Street Night, not Deadly Outbreak. Really? Again, I know it's legal stuff, but still. It's 2020. Figure this shit out. Let's go. But anyway... I'm fucking done talking about Scorpio 1. I'm never ever going to talk about this movie again. Fuck this stupid movie. And in 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 uh in advance, fuck the next movie too because it's just as fucking bad. They both fucking suck. But anyway, um that's it. Stay tuned. Next will be Memorial Day, and by the time you see this video, it will be Thanksgiving, so hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Hope you get some good food, and uh, if you like your family, I hope you enjoy your time with your family. So yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.